Hey guys, good to see everyone again. So, as an air gun reviewer for the air gun industry, and having done that for a long time and been able to put my hands on and thoroughly examine a lot of different iron from a lot of different manufacturers, I, you kind of come away with a gauge of what brand is doing what and why and what their approach is. To, to selling product. And as a reviewer, you know, you spend so much time and you get really intimate with these brands, you really kind of get a good bead on what their approach to success is. And there's like a term that that I've kind of just kept to myself and used over the years. And there there's a, and, and I would call it uh, a nine, I would call a gun like this term describes a nine tenths gun. And what I mean by that is after having really learned the gun and understanding what it's about, I'd say to myself, that's a gun that's nine tenths of the way to greatness. And by greatness, I don't mean like, yeah, it's great. Or how do you like your Air Max Cayman? Yeah, it's great. I mean, as I mean, like greatness as in really is so close to a huge amount of success in a very competitive industry where a lot of air gun brands are really paying attention to what it is that the that uh, that this that the avid air gunner wants what's important to them and bringing their guns to market answering that call or answering that demand you've got that over here in this pile and then in this other pile you've got manufacturers that you know they think they know what's important to the air gunner. Um, and so, or they know, but they've got all this red tape and bureaucracy to where they can't get it, get the product there. So they get it most of the way there. And they're like, it's good enough, put it out there. You know, 75% of people will like it. So what's been really interesting, having spent two full weeks thoroughly learning this gun, and I've got a lot to share with you today, I've come away with this new company, Air Max, Air Max, Air Max, I don't know how you say it, it's A-I-R-M-A-K-S, they're out of the Czech Republic, um, having, being actually th quite thoroughly impressed. They've done so many things right, and by right I mean they're listening to what it is that the air gunner wants because they look at this as a tool to, um, to obtain a certain objective. I want to be able to perform at 50 or 100. I want to be able to make the gun work with a lot of different pellets. I want to be able to cheat the wind, right? I want to have a trigger that communicates with me so that I have the ultimate control of exactly when that round goes down range. I want it quiet. You know, I want it lightweight. I want it compact. You know, the list goes on. I want it regulated. You know, the list just goes on and on. I know everything that's important to you guys because it's important to me because what I found is that when a manufacturer checks all those boxes before they bring the gun to market, you wind up with a product that's just super easy and fun to use. And let's face it, we all, us air gunners, most of us have more than just a few air guns and the ones that we tend to go use are the ones that are fun to use. They're simple, they do the job and they're just fun to use. And then we have like our project guns, right? Where we invest all this time and energy like it's a Formula One race car trying to get it there. But, so I'm gonna share everything with you that I've learned over the last two weeks and um, if you're new here, by the way, this is not my main YouTube channel, okay? AEAC Vlog is an offshoot of the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel or AEAC Home. That's my main YouTube channel. Why is that important to you? Because that's where you will find all of the full reviews. You will find event coverage like RMAC right, and, and EBR and the Pyramid Air Cup. You will find yeah. factory tour videos yeah, yeah, in the Czech awesome. Republic and, and, sometimes like and uh, in Germany and Sweden, up in Tennessee. You'll find um, trade show coverage of SHOT Show and EWA. You know, for anything related to Airgun, full review you'll find over there. Okay. 
and eventually, in a couple weeks, weather permitting, you're going to find a full review of the new Air Max, Cayman, Air Max Cayman X over there. What does full review mean? It means 50 yard, 100 yard, sound test, trigger test, refill, handling, ergonomics, close up pictures, and there's always a lot of lessons contained within my reviews that would apply to any air gunner um, wanting to become a better air gunner. That you will all get over there. This is going to be more like a classroom. Discovery, approach, how did I get to the result? Why have I come to this conclusion to be deployed in that full review over there? So if you're new here, that's what this is going to be. It's going to be a lot of learning, a lot of cool stuff if this is a product that you're interested in. But if you want a 20 minute distilled wham bam, thank you ma'am, this is the performance. Look forward to that review and get subscribed over at AEAC Home. Okay, so a quick snapshot. The Air Max Cayman comes from the Czech Republic. This gun came to me by way of Utah Air Guns. I believe they're the only importer in the United States of this brand currently, I could be wrong. Um, you're in about the $1,350 price point here. So this is not a cheapie, but you're getting 300 bar fill, you're getting regulated, you're getting a match grade trigger, you're getting an externally adjustable hammer spring, you're getting a walnut, a black walnut stock, you're getting a moderated gun, you're getting a match grade trigger, an adjustable butt pad, and the list goes on and on. You're getting a CZ match grade barrel made in the check. So this is a lot of gun, right? Um, the boring stuff, it's 28 inches long. It weighs just seven pounds by itself. Uh, scoped up, shoot ready, filled with air, magazine full of lead, rings the whole nine yards, you're about 8.4 pounds. Um, those two figures are lightweight for, uh, for an air gun. Uh, this particular model is the Cayman X. There's also a Cayman, which is shorter, and there's also a Catron, Catron, K-A-T-R-O-N, hopefully I'm saying that right, that uh, Air Max just, just released, which is more of a tactical rifle looking looking deal. Um, the barrel on this one, you're 500 millimeters versus the shorter Cayman, you're, or excuse me, you're 520 versus the shorter Cayman, you're 400 millimeter barrel. The air tube's longer in this one, you're 285 cc's versus the more compact Cayman, you're 190 cc's. Now there's three stock choices. There's this black here, which looks like synthetic, but it's not, it's a painted black walnut. There is this over here, which is their laminate. I'm trying to put it together for you here. Uh, that comes in a green laminate and a dark green laminate. This is like a $50 upgrade, I believe. So you're about $1,400 with this one. This gun's guts are right over here, down on the table. We're gonna get into that in a little bit. Uh, we've got a two-year warranty. It ships with two magazines. It ships with actually a bunch of cool stuff. Let's go over this quick. Uh, because this is unusual. And, and to me, this is an indicator that you've got an air gun manufacturer that's really paying attention and trying to give a little bit of extra value add, right? So of course you get an owner's manual, which is pretty good. It goes into some stuff. It doesn't go into everything that's important to us. It doesn't go into trigger adjustment. It doesn't say how to reload the magazine. Um, it does not go into adjusting the hammer spring to, to, adjust, to control velocity. But it tells you some other stuff like how to degas and how to refill it and you know these, these kinds of things. You get a little QC shot chart from Utah or shot or a QC card from Utah Air Guns. This one showed that um, it was shooting 920 with a 16 grain by Josh. That's basically all the information that's on here, right? But here's this little kit that ships with the gun. And this is a pretty neat deal. So you get a little DIN fitting to hook to your scuba or SCBA tank and your own little fill whip and your own little threaded um, fill probe, okay? But the gun also comes with, it also comes with a quick, a Foster quick disconnect fill probe, which I've been using for the last two weeks and I found phenomenal. I haven't even tried using, um, using that one yet, right? It comes with, a degas tool that comes with some um, some felt cleaning buttons comes with a couple of o-rings uh, these are really tiny 
and this is a 22 cal. Guns available in 22 and 25, by the way. Both of them are. Both the Cayman and the and the, and the, the Cayman X and the smaller Cayman. I don't know exactly what these are for. Anyway, comes with two 10-shot magazines. The magazine's been great. We'll get into that later. And, um, oh, and it even comes with an Air Max soft case. So it's a re really professional approach to bringing you a gun that kind of checks all those boxes. And I think Utah Air Guns even offers, I think it's like a $50 upgrade for an Air Max hard case. So, you, you know, it's just lots, lots of options there. All right. Um, there's so much I want to talk about. I hardly know where to begin. And I'm a little bit groggy today. It's kind of a cruddy day here in Tampa. We got a cold front moving through, so it's windy and it's rainy and it's just blah. And I didn't sleep particularly well last night, so if this isn't my best vlog ever, please forgive me. But um, I guess let's just start, let's just go end to end. I always find it's easiest to do that. That way I tend not to forget anything. All right, so this is what the Cayman X looks like naked. All right. About like, yeah, about like yay. So it comes with a moderator already from the factory. And what's kind of cool about their moderator is it is a modulated moderator. You've got these little little baffles in here and I can unscrew any one of these and kind of control the depth of that moderator, maybe to tune for stability behind the pellet or slug or to control sound output or to control ultimate length. The gun's 28 inches long with this guy sitting right about like so, okay? Donnie FL um, offers an adapter um, that will fit into this shroud right here. And so that you can run one half inch UNF moderators, all right? So, Something I wanted to do is spend a lot of time on the moderator, and I did. I spent like a, I dedicated probably half a day to it because a moderator can be such a good tuning tool for a gun. And, you know, making it quieter, it helps with follow-up shots and with your neighbors not so much worrying about what it is that you're doing, you know, and this sort of thing. So, um, I went, uh, I experimented with three different moderators. All right, these are all by Don FL. This is the OEM one. Let me say that this gun in 22 cal comes out of the box as a 32 foot pound deal, and we'll get all into shot charts and shot count and all that in a little bit. Okay, this moderator does a good job of hushing that 32 foot pounds when compared to other guns at the market that are putting out 32 foot pounds. I would call this a very good moderator. That being said, I wanted to see if we could do gooder, right? So I busted out the Donnie's and um, it was almost like, um, you know, like when you're playing like a musical instrument, you're like boop, 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 you know? <laughs> Going to first to this Tatsu, which is a little bit more of a compact look and a great, the, the two best looking moderators on the gun were the Tatsu and the Ronin. The Sumo, I didn't personally care for, but one of you guys might like it. This made the gun a little bit quieter this made the gun the sumo made the gun a little bit quieter than the tatsu and the ronin made the gun a little bit quieter than the sumo so it was a perfect little step this setup you see right here is like stupid quiet like when i first put this on i thought you know I thought the gun was broke. I'm like double checking like, you know, the crony and these kinds of things. Am I still at 32 foot pounds? Because it literally sounded like a little pea shooter. And what's nice about this Ronin is this added heft up here at the business end of the gun really helped settle down the gun. You know, shooting 16 grains, the shot cycle is clean, it's snappy. There's not a lot of movement, but when you get up into that 18 grain, that shot cycle gets a little bit longer, so it gets a little bit harder to control and to be precise with. And I found it was really nice to have that Ronin on there to really settle down that shot cycle and kind of contain that flip a little bit. And so I proceeded to do all of my culling, my 25 yard culling, trying to figure out what pellets and slugs I'm gonna bring with me to film out at 50 and 100. 
with um, with the Ronin here. It's 22 cal gun. I used all 25 cal Donny FLs. Apparently he's changed that now where he's got a system where he's automatically doing the plus sizing on his end. But when he sent me a box of moderators a year ago, he wasn't doing that. And so normally with a 22 cal, I'll run a 25. Um, if I've got a 22 on hand, I may try it because you can get a little bit quieter. But sometimes you get into clipping. I don't mean clipping where the pellet is making contact with the barrels, with the baffles, but where it's getting close enough to where, you know, it can destabilize that pellet. And so normally, as a general rule, I always plus size one, especially if I'm getting the noise and the stability where, um, where I want, where I want. All right. So that's that. Moving on down, 520 millimeter CZ barrel. My experience with CZ, here's something that I want to share with you guys as a reviewer. The industry is really um, caught up in Lothar Walther. And I feel like the industry is caught up in Lothar Walther and Smooth Twist. And I feel like the air gun community, guys and gals like you and me, are caught up in Lothar Walther and Smooth Twist. And don't get me wrong, those barrels can perform and do perform, especially with their polygonal barrels. But I've always, I don't, I've never understood, like to me, CZ has always been like probably the best barrel. And when I say best, I mean most forgiving, always accurate, never fouls. You know, best is an ugly word for a reviewer. And I'm, and I'm, you know, so take that with a grain of salt. That's a subjective thing. But, you know, I don't know if it's actually the best. I haven't, you know, scienced the shit out of that. But from my perspective, it always just works and it just always makes it easy. And so there's a CZ barrel in here and something that I noticed right away when I was pulling patches through perfectly like smooth as glass all the way through the barrel end to end. No like rough spots, no like bulges, no recesses where your patch is going fast, slow, fast. It's just slick. It doesn't hold on to lead. Even at velocities like 920, 930, 940, it's not fouling up. Um, and it's clean two, three patch worms flipping sides, you're done. And that is, that is a great thing for air gunners because instead of cleaning a barrel every hundred shots or 500 shots, some of them never need it. This is probably going to be one of those barrels that just doesn't need a whole lot of attention. The other thing I loved about it is like, as with all CZ barrels, you know, damn well that they're going to like every JSB and JSB brand and variant of pellet, as well as the H&N Barracuda brands and variants of the H&N Barracudas. The Barracuda, the Matches, the Powers, you know, their, their hollow point hunter, you know, it's just, it's just a given. And, and we'll get into pellets in a little bit, but um, that was my experience. I mean, stupid accurate at 25. The stability is there. I'm presuming I'm going to see the same thing at 50 and 100. There's probably going to be some fine tuning of which pellet flies the best at the speeds that this gun is providing um, at those ranges. But at 25 yards, just grab any JSB or a, any Barracuda variant, H&M Barracuda, and you're going to be fine. Even liked a couple of slugs that love the NSA slugs, 20 grains and the uh, howler variant of that and again we'll get into all that i don't want to get too far ahead of myself okay moving on down a huge what do i call it like um a huge marker for me that air max is listening to what's important to the avid air gunner is forward short throw cycling okay this is going to be blazing fast for follow-up shots, but it's also nice because you don't have to take your head off the target. <laughs> All right. It's just super easy. And they've taken that a step further. Okay. The stock is ambidextrous. So is that forward side cycling, side lever cycling. You can see the little recess cut over here on the walnut. There's one over here on this side too. Okay. The instructions take you through on how to very easily swap that from one side over to the other. 
super cool. Like, you know, it, I'm a right-handed guy, but I'm leaving this on the left side. It comes on the left side. I thought that was just perfect. The cycling is, as I said, it's very short. It's very light. It's precise. It's clean. Okay. Couldn't find any fault there. All good. Making me a happy air gunner. Remember, if we like it, we're going to use it. All right. Comes with a pick rail up on top. Um, there are still brands out there that are sending their guns to America with 11 millimeter dovetails. And like, that's all fine. That was exciting like five, 10 years ago. But the last five years, we've all been asking for pick rails. So they're listening. I don't know if there's any MOA built into there. It actually looks like there is, but I don't know if, the, uh, if there actually is. Okay. Magazine. Okay. Little 10 shot guy. Very simplistic in its design. It's metal. Some kind of aluminum. Aluminum. aluminum I always get tripped up on that one. Some kind of a, an aluminum that I'm, I'm guessing. But it's a, it's a really easy load deal. It's just one of those like drop, roll, drop, pinch, roll, hold, whatever. You drop one in there and you kind of pinch it and you drop the next one in. You're holding with your thumb. You drop the next one. You just keep preloading that spring all the way up to 10. You're good to go. And it's just an easy, easy load. And it can be, the gun can be decocked. Okay. Super easy. All right. Um, I'm going to be, be a little bit backwards here. This little hole right here, that's where the safety catch goes. And this is going to segue into, let's talk trigger for a second. So let me just say that um, I am not recommending you move your remove your gun's safety catch. Okay. But my job is, is to, every time a product comes across my desk, it's to thoroughly learn the product so that, I'm confident that what I'm sharing is truth to you guys. Done my uh, done my due diligence, and um, and to be safe, but it's also to really wring every drop of performance I can get out of the gun because when I'm reviewing product, it's not about me. It's never about me. Some of you guys are like, oh, why are you always on the bench? Why don't you shoot freehand? Because it's not about Steve Shally. It's always about the product. What can the product do? So I try to remove as many variables as I can. And that's why I've removed this variable. And now we'll get into why. So the trigger's dual stage. Um, it broke at a, about a pound and a half out of the box. Okay. First stage was nice and clean and light. Second stage stop was good. I knew it was there. And I had just a little, little bit of creep, maybe like two millimeters of creep, almost like what you would see like in a Glock handgun, two, three millimeters of creep. And then it would break. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. So I checked the other one and it didn't have it. I called Michael Went, the owner of the Oregon Nation Forum, who has also sent one of these. And by the way, he's got a big thread over at the Oregon Nation Forum so that you can, you can read about his experiences with the Cayman because we've kind of done like a side-by-side, -side, you know, duo review. Or, uh, yeah, the, sh the shorter Cayman. And, um, and I, I just lost my train of thought. So anyway, um, oh, that, that, so, so I cross-referenced it and he didn't have that, that creep in the trigger. So I busted out the owner's manual, nothing in there on it. Um, I called Utah air guns. Um, they said there's, there is a, an adjustment screw. I moved that adjustment screw, but they said they didn't think it could really do a whole lot. Okay. That's cool. So, so I moved that adjustment screw about a, about an eighth of a turn clockwise, completely eliminated that creep now. And it brought that brake weight down a couple more ounces. I think I was like one pound, eight, nine ounces, something like that. Now I had a really good trigger. Okay. I ran a couple of days with it like that. I felt like that was still a little bit heavy for the match culling work that I was wanting to do. And so I pulled it apart again. You got to take the stock off to get to the trigger adjustments. And, um, and I went about another quarter turn clockwise and I lost my ability to cock the gun. So I knew I was really close to that sear engaging or not engaging. So basically what I did 
as I slowly, after going in about an eighth of a turn and a quarter of a turn, I slowly started working my way out in about 10th turn increments until that sear started to engage when I would go to cock the gun. And then I'd be banging it on, I'll make sure, you know, banging it on the side, banging it on the back, you know, banging it on the counter a little bit, make sure that wasn't going to go off, do a fast cock, you know, kind of take the trigger, slap it up against that second stage, make sure it wasn't going to have any accidental fires. And I was able to safely get that down to uh, less than a pound, like 12-ish ounces with no creep and a really nice first stage. Now I'm in like match grade land, like something I can take to competition. The bummer is being adjusted in that sub one pound range, um, I couldn't get the safety back in. And the way this works is normally you just put it in the gun, it slides right through and it'll come right out. And something interesting about that, when I review um, Ataman Russia, their triggers and safety catches are set up the exact same way where if you want to get them really, really good, you just have to forego this, um, which is a terrible idea. And so I hated that I was kind of caught between that rock and a hard place. So, you know, on the one hand, I want to make sure my message to you guys is clear, run your safety catch. But I wanted to give you an explanation as to why mine was out. <clears throat> and probably what I'll do is when I go to film the full review, at 50 and 100, I'm going to put it back in because you guys are going to need a real world test. And I'm going to bring that trigger probably back up to my one pound, eight ounces, one pound, six ounces and run with this because that's the reality of how your ownership experience was going to be. I just wanted to give you a thorough and behind the scenes as to why, why, uh, why this was out. But I'll demo the trigger here for you. Everyone likes to see this. So it's got a nice metal blade to it. Okay, there's your first stage. Um, it's what I would call like a perfect length. I got to keep my face up here because the camera auto focuses on my face <laughs> and I'm running a pretty narrow depth of field because it's freaking dark in here being as cloudy as it is. But um, uh, so there it is. It's the first stage and with 12 ounces of pressure and no creep. I mean, it's just it's just like I tapped a pane of glass with a nail and a hammer. <laughs> just. It's as good as any. It's as good as I've ever had my finger on. Let me say that. So that's getting me excited, you know, as an air gunner. All right. Adjustable rubber butt pad, by the way. This is really nice. It doesn't, it's never really matters to me too much when you're in the field because I've got a good line of sight here. But when you get like on the bench and you get that stock kind of coming down in here, you're going to want to come up on that a little bit. So it's, it's, it's a nice thing that they've thought of. Okay, tank, 285 cc's in this one, 190 in the smaller Cayman. It's a 300 bar fill. And we, we live in a time when you're starting to see it become fashionable to go from 250 bar to 300 bar. If you're new to air gunners, 250 bar fills are more than plenty when you've got a big reservoir. And it gets challenging when you have a lot of air guns that are 200 bar fills with a not big reservoir, because then the only way that they can get there is to sacrifice power. Uh, we saw that in the Benjamin Marauder semi-automatic vid, vids here and on the other channel over the last couple of weeks. Okay. <clears throat> so let's dive into the shot charts. So if you don't have the fill equipment to fill to 300 bar, you do not need it to have a meaningful, pleasant ownership experience with the Cayman X. Okay. What I mean by that is you can fill to just 250 bar and you're going to get 60, 50 or 60 good usable shots with about a 30 foot pound of energy average in 22, um, with like a 25 second extreme spread that will be usable at, at 50 and 100 yards. Okay. If you want to go to 300 bar, you're going to get maybe another 40 shots on top of that. Okay. When is that useful? Well, if you want to go out hunting all day or if you're inside in 75 degrees 
or I guess up north, you're probably more like 60, 65, 68 when it's like 20 degrees outside. You're going to go outside, you're going to have pressure drop in your air cylinder. So you're going to fill the 300 bar, you're going to go outside for an hour, and your 300 bar without having fired a shot is going to be at 280. Okay, so there are benefits to 300 bar fills. All right. So here's what the shot chart looked like. Remember, this is a regulated gun with an externally adjustable hammer spring. I'm gonna get a little deep on you here over the next few minutes. All right, so 100, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you two shot charts. The first one is the complete picture of what the valving is doing inside the gun. A, an AEAC tuning guide was not requested of me for the review of this gun. If you're new here, I have done several full tuning guides to teach you guys how to tune and set up your air gun. I've done the Impact, I've done the Crown, I've done the Daystate Red Wolf, the electronic one, I've done the Air Venturi uh, Avenger. Um, I've done a lot of them. So, but I'm not going to really get into all that because it wasn't asked of me. And frankly, that's a lot of extra time and it's a lot of extra money for them and it just wasn't part of what I'm doing here. So um, I'm just going to try to give you kind of an overview. But here's a snapshot of what you're looking at, all right? You've got feet per second. You've got shots. I'm humming along on this slowly descending shot chart from, with an 18 grain from about 900 down to about 8, 850 over, let's call it, 120 usable shots. And then you see this spike up. That's where the gun falls off the regulator. It fell off the regulator at 100 bar, which means the regulator in this gun is set to 100 bar. Okay, and then you'll see it, it spikes up. That's where it comes off the reg, and then it starts to fall back down. That's where it's coming off of the hammer. All right, so that's the complete picture. You as an owner are going to be shooting it in this window. All right, this window is 120 or so usable shots with a relatively steady velocity, okay, that you can use at, say, inside of 30 yards. Here comes the challenge. Because I'm starting at 900 feet per second and I'm ending at 850, there's a 50 foot per second extreme spread right there, okay? What that means to me is that if I'm gonna use this gun at 50 yards or 100 yards, I need to get that extreme spread down to more like 2025, 20, so I'm not experiencing points of impact difference because of the change of the velocity of, of the pellet. So what that means to me as an owner is I have two choices, okay? I can either run the gun from 300 bar down to, I don't know, 200 bar, let's say, all right? And have 60 shots with a 25 second extreme spread, or I can run the gun from 200 bar down to 100 bar and have 60 shots with an extreme spread within 25 feet per second. So what all that means to you is that this, as it comes to you from Airmax, Airmax is a 60 shot, 50 and 100 yard gun. It's a 120 shot, sub 30 yard gun, okay? Where you, the operator, are not gonna notice drop differences. Okay, so here's the overview. 119 shots at an 875 foot per second average. Perfect sweet spot for a Diablo shaped pellet, whether it's a 16 grade, an 18 grade, or 14, it doesn't matter. They all like to live between 830 and 875. The, the JSB redesigns, you can push those to 910-ish, 920-ish, and sometimes get away with it and, and keep your stability. So they've done their homework there, they get that you know, as a company, and that's great. And that's probably why you've seen, or you're gonna see some extraordinary accuracy that I'm gonna show with you, show you here in a little bit, okay? High 905, low 844, average 875, extreme spread 61 feet per second. That's, that's what we were talking about. You wanna be in 2025 to be good at 50 and 100. So you gotta pick that side or that side to run in, to do your, do your work in. Standard deviation 18, foot pounds of energy 32, average over the 120 shots. So you're gonna see higher than 32. You're gonna see less than 32, probably 30 to 30, probably 31 to 30 to 33 is probably the window, something like that. Okay. Um, so 
I like to give you guys a good show. I like to get everything I can out of the product. And even though a tuning guide wasn't ordered of me, I'm like, you know what? I got to get this. I got to get this. I got to get this flat. I got to get it flat. Because I wanted to be able to show, I want to be able to show my audience <clears throat> that this can be a 120 shot, 50 and 100 yard gun. So I spent the day tuning it. I'm not going to get into all that with you, but I did my thing and I did my due diligence and I did it the right way and thoroughly and completely. So I know exactly where I'm at with this gun. <clears throat> and here's what I meant by a nine tenths gun. This is the one tenth. <laughs> all right. So long story short, I was not able to level that out with a hammer, with a hammer spring with a 16 grain or an 18 grain, running as low as 840 feet per second with either. So I'm getting down into that 26, 27 foot pounds area. Okay. A 16 grain, we know from our last video, moving at just 835 feet per second can be a half inch 50 yard or a one inch 100 yard gun. But you're going to get a lot of movement in a three in just a three to six mile an hour wind. So I was trying to avoid that. I feel like I could have flattened this out because <clears throat> what was happening is I was bringing my hammer spring down and down and down and down and testing with the 18 and the 16 grain at 300 bar, 250, 200, 150, 100. And it didn't no matter it didn't matter what I did with that hammer spring moving in it in one tenth very small increments so i made sure not to overstep it or overrun it and no matter what i did <clears throat> that 50 60 foot per second descending slope remained so in other words if i instead of starting at 905 with an 18 grain if i started at let's say 850 855 you know i'm finishing um in like the 20s you know so and it didn't matter what I did so what that tells me is that you have two options as an owner you can probably run this gun if you wanted to set that if you wanted to set your hammer spring to where your 300 bar velocity or your 250 bar velocity is 820 830 so 23 ish foot pounds something like that you can probably flatten out that curve, okay? But the only way to get it flat with a 16 grain or an 18 grain and maintain that 850 to 875 foot per second sweet spot with either pellet across across the, 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 the string would be to get that regulator pressure up because if I get that regulator pressure up, then it starts to, it starts to level out this shot chart. Okay, probably fell off the reg at 100, remember. So probably 110, 120. I'm adding pressure on that hammer spring. So it's evening things out. I'm finding myself getting into a tuning guide. And I promised myself that this wouldn't be that. Watch those other videos for that kind of thing. But that's the only way to get there. I suspect that the way Air Max arrived there is they basically began with their shorter barreled 420 versus 500 Cayman. They took the Cayman's regulator and valving. <clears throat> they put a longer tube on it and they put a longer barrel on it because the Cayman runs, the shorter Cayman runs relatively flat for about 50 shots with a 16 grain at 845 feet per second. So that told me right there, they've designed, they've desi their, their original design plans are with that shorter Cayman. Then they tried to make it work with something bigger. I triple checked this. I have two larger Cayman X's here. They both did the exact same thing. I could take one chart and lay it over the other. Boom, over a hundred and whatever shots. I went and checked out uh, Shooter 1721, Rick Reams video from November of this year on this gun, the Cayman X. Uh, where he had that FX crony on there, same thing. He started at 930, worked his way down to, I think it was like 850, 860, and then poop, and then it skyrocketed back up to 900. 
exactly like mine did. So that's three guns that are like this. So I knew I didn't get like a bum gun or nothing. And then uh, you go over to the Airgun Nation forum and you see all the work Michael's done on the shorter barreled, shorter air cylinder Cayman. And that gun was clearly designed around a JSB 16 grain, pushing it to 845 feet per second, which is a good place. That's 26, 27 foot pounds, something like that. And that's a pellet and speed that's gonna fly stable to 100 yards at that velocity. So that's good engineering. Where I was a little bit bummed out is they took that engineering, they put it in this gun with a longer barrel, longer tube, and said, that's good enough. Well, it's not good enough, okay? It's good enough if, <clears throat> I mean, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me rephrase it. 99% of people are gonna love this gun just how it is. But for those elitist air gunners that want everything done right and want the tune right, and would rather have 80 or 90 flat shots than 120 in a curve, um, that's gonna matter to them. And so, you know, it is what it is. That's the reality of the situation. So, um, what does all of that ultimately mean to you as an owner if you want the Cayman X? It means that you can buy the gun as is and be happy running it for 60 or so shots so you can get your extreme spread in that 2025 range and it just accept it for what it is or you can and I'm hypothesizing based on past experience you can probably flatten out that shot curve if you're willing to run 820 830 with a 16 grain which will work at 50 and 100 yards but you're going to be you're going to be one to two inches of deflection at 50 in a three to six mile an hour wind and three to six inches at 100 in a three to six mile an hour wind it's just something you're going to have to cope with Crosswind or, or headwinds are going to bring your pellet down. Tailwinds are going to move it significantly up. You're going to notice that as a shooter. So there's so many things to get excited about with this brand, but that was like a little, it was like a little hiccup for me. And it's my job to teach you guys and be transparent. All right. <clears throat> Hammer spring, super easy to adjust. You can adjust it while it's inside the stock. And you're doing that right here. I think it's like a five millimeter, four or five millimeter. Allen, over on this side, there's a little locking screw that puts pressure actually on the threads, which I thought was a little bit weird, so don't go crazy with it, um, which is accessible, which is accessible through the stock. That's what it looks like right there. And that kind of holds your hammer spring adjustments in place so that they don't wander. The hammer spring on this gun, very responsive, very sensitive to input. Like I was moving like one eighth, one tenth turns and seeing differences in, in velocity. So it's not something you got to go crazy with. When you first get it, don't move it a quarter turn for your first turn if you're going to fiddle with it. Move it like an eighth turn or a tenth turn, you know, to get things uh, exactly where you want. And then with light pressure, apply that grub because it does push right onto the threads of uh of that hammer spring all right oh what else um before we get into pellet culling mm -mm 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 -mm. um nine tenths so this is a walnut stock they call it black walnut and this may have been just like a one-off i don't know I don't see this on the laminate, but there's like little, um, there's like little pock marks in these recession areas. And it may just be the coarse cut of lumber and then they kind of finish the outside, but didn't kind of finish like in here. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really change anything. You can see them in here, what kind of little pock marks in the recession. Some people might actually like it because it's real walnut. You can kind of get an idea of the cut, but just something I noticed if you're a particular natured guy like me, you know, it might, uh, it might jump out at you. Oh, whoo, don't fall. Manometer over here, uh, over here on this end, 300 bar manometer. One really good thing is the manometer was always um, within, I'd say five bar of what I was seeing on the, uh, the fill tanks. So we've got a good accurate manometer. That regulator, by the way, I asked if it could be adjustable. Um, and it's, it's like adjustable if you like, take the tube apart and take the regulator out of the tube and take the regulator apart and 
So to me, that's just kind of a non, that's just a non-adjustable deal. Here's the, uh, <clears throat> that's where you adjust the trigger, by the way. It's that center screw right on top of that little step. See this little step right here? Right there. And your hammer springs right here. I didn't fiddle with any of this with the trigger, but it looks like there's a little bit of adjustment in here with the collar, which is kind of cool. Anywho, um, your fill port's here. <laughs> right there. How many times can I back up? There it is. Before we, uh, before we move on here. Okay. And everything worked great. I didn't have any blowing out at 100, any weird hissings. I mean, just look at this thing. The design is so good, and it's so simple. These guys are like, this is what I mean, they're nine-tenths of the way to greatness. They just got to do a little bit of tuning on this bigger model for our market. Other markets, they may not care. Maybe they set it up for like a 12 or 15 foot-pound market in Europe. I don't know. But us over here, our standard is 875 feet per second with an 18 grain or 920 feet per second with a 16 grain and flat. 30 foot pounds ish. Is that necessary? No, but that gives you the shooter a lot more control in a three to five mile an hour crosswind at 50 and hundred yards. That's why that's important to us. We can make 23, 24, 25 foot pounds work. And in a lot of cases, those guns are more enjoyable to shoot because they're more docile. So they're easier to shoot consistently well. But the real world is we deal with wind when we're hunting and when we're hunting far away. So 30 foot pounds makes it easier. And so that's what that's all about. All right, let's move all of this aside for a sec. Oh, we're not going to move all of this aside for a sec. I forgot something. <laughs> I just saw it. Okay, so on the bottom of the Cayman and the Cayman X is one of those UIC on shoots rails. Um, I prefer a pick rail down there. This pick rail adapter came from Crawford and Lipt and um, did a great job. Utah Air Guns has these as well. I've, this is an AccuTac bipod uh, made, in a, made in America and, uh, and they're great. Also available at Utah Air Guns. Now the funny thing about this on shoots rail is I have, I have an adapter here that RAW, Rapid Air Weapons, made me years ago. And it fits these rails on the Rapid Air Weapons guns. It fit these rails on um, the Air Arms product. But it wouldn't fit this one for some reason. It's like the shoulders were a little bit too thick or too tall on it, so I couldn't slide it in there. But um, Utah Air Guns sent me this one from Crawford and Lipton. It slid in there perfect. Excuse me. And that's what I wound up using for, uh, for my bipod adapter. I spent, a, I spent like a day or two shooting without the bipod, and then I spent a day or, sh or two shooting with it. I got better accuracy with the bipod. So with this setup and this gun, it definitely gave me more control. Ergos are phenomenal on this gun. They did all of this so well, and they did all of this so well. It's the right thickness. It's got really good balance. Seven pounds, eight and a half, as you see here. It feels good. So, so yeah, there's that. <clears throat> Okay, so if you're new to AEAC, what I like to do is when I go to film the full review at 50 and 100, I, that's, a, that's like a 25 mile, 25 mile trip out into the country, and I usually do it over two or three days. So I like to try to get a big pile of pellets down to a little pile of pellets. Like, you know, what is this gun going to want to eat and what's it going to perform with? is what I like to bring out to test at 50 and 100 and put that on camera for you guys. But before I get there, <clears throat> before I get there, I like to do a lot of work at 25 yards here at the house to kind of learn where I'm at and learn the gun and do all these, all of these other things that, uh, that I'm sharing with you, okay? And as mentioned, the CZ barrel in that gun really likes the JSB stuff and it really likes the h and N. Barracuda variants. Um, uh, Michael kind of found the same. I think his preferred pellet was the JSB 1589. Surprise, the gun's obviously been designed around it. <clears throat> so, but I, I put everything through there because I always like to find these little nuggets that nobody else has. And, but I found basically what I would have expected to find. Loves the JSB 18 grain, loves the JSB 16 grain, 
okay? If you guys don't know it, you can check out my factory tour vid of JSB, Joseph Schultz Bohumen in the Czech Republic. These guys make a lot of pellets for a lot of different companies. For example, okay, they make um, pellets for FX and this is all explained in that video, but the way FX does this is FX had, like when you go to the JSB plant, there's like 60 or 70 machines like stamping out pellets. FX likes to have a fresh dye do all of their pellets for the whole year. So, and that's an arrangement they have with JSB. So you get, you get better consistency typically with an FX pellet over a JSB pellet. Okay, but JSB is making these, all right? But it's one of those things where mileage may vary, so you're just gonna have to do your own due diligence. Same thing with these range masters. Day State went to JSB and they said, we want you to make us a pellet that'll fly really well out of the polygonal barrels we're using on our HP guns. And this is their 18 and 16 grain. And, um, and JSB does that for Day State, and that's this range master brand. And the thing, the thing freaking loved them, both of them, as it did the FXs, all right? Air Arms does things a little bit different. So Air Arms has their own specific die design that's a little bit different than all the rest. And um, at JSB, that JSB uses only for their stuff, which is why sometimes we come across a gun that works with um, an Air Arms and not a JSB or an FX and not an Air Arms or a, a Range Master and not a JSB, whatever. You got to do the work, okay? But the 16 grain Air Arms and the 18 grain Air Arms, it absolutely loved them. By the way, you're with all of this stuff, as that thing comes from the factory, you're you're about an 875 is average with an 18 and about 920 average with a 16. Remembering that that's going to change by 50, 60 feet per second across the spread, depending on where you're at. <clears throat> Again, if you're willing to run just 60 shots, which is plenty for a day of hunting and fun, you're going to be fine with your extreme spreads. Gun loved the JSB Hades, and this is a nasty, nasty little pellet for hunting. Um, the only caveat I found to these is they slow down much quicker <laughs> than these guys. Like one of the cool things about using that lab radar, which is a Doppler radar, it tracks the speed of the pellet from the muzzle all the way to the target, is this loses steam, this 16 grain Hades loses steam faster than this 16 grain JSB. It's also not as stable in the wind, I found, but that could be very accurate at 50 and 100 yards and it's certainly nasty when it makes an, Im makes an impact, okay? As I would expect with a CZ, it liked all the Barracuda stuff. It did pretty well with the normal Barracuda. I put a 451 in it. It did pretty well. It did not like the 452s or 453s. I tried them and um, it really liked this Barracuda 18. This is a brand new pellet from H&N and it's called the Barracuda 18 because <laughs> Barracuda in a 22 cal is normally like a 2021 20, grain deal. And that would bring a lot of these guns that come out of the factory tuned to run 875 with an 18 grain and bring them down to 830 because this is a little bit harder metal. It doesn't seal as well in the barrel and it's a little bit heavier. I should be waving this Barracuda. And so it was kind of getting, it was kind of get putting the Barracudas at a, at a velocity where they wouldn't be as stable. So it's really nice to see H&N come up with this 18 grain and holy moly, this thing's one hole in with them at, uh, at 25 yards, okay? So I knew of my velocity, I knew of my power, so I didn't wanna run anything higher than really 18, 20 grain in slugs. I ran the 17 and a half grain NSA. It's fine for 25 yard work. I don't think I would rely on it to go hunting, um, but I would rely on the NSA 20.2 grain. It was flinging these at like 770, 780, with remarkable stability. We've come across this before. When I reviewed the Air Arms TDR and um, it was pushing the H&N 25 grain slugs to 780 into one holes at 50 yards and 100 yards. Um, you know, there's a conception out there that you gotta, you gotta push a slug fast to get it to stabilize. Sometimes that's the case. 
I've found that to be the case in a lot of times, a lot of times, but it's not always the case. And this is a prime example of that. These uh, 25 yards stabilized wonderfully at 777.80, okay? If you don't know it, Nielsen Specialty Ammo is making ammunition for Day State, and they're called the Howlers. So it's supposed to be the same thing. But I have a hunch that these come off of two different machines because I'm getting a little bit varying results depending on what guns I put these in. Like they, they shoot different from one another. So maybe it's that Nick's just got like different machines setting up doing different things. So anyway, what that means to you is you want to, you probably want to own both to experiment just like anything else to see what, uh, what your barrel is going to, uh, is going to like. All right. So I'm going to get all this out to 50 and I'm hoping <laughs> for my sake that just a couple of them stay great at 50 because i you know the i can't make a full review that's more than 20 25 minutes youtube is uh is not a kind place and a lot of people don't have that ability to uh, hold on that long and watch a video so i gotta pick two or three or four that it's going to uh, perform with and share them with you uh share them with you there but there's a lot of work to do it's almost like i hate it when a gun likes everything it creates so much more work for me. It's like when I went out and did the Marauder a couple of weeks ago, that gun liked one pellet out of like 40 different pellets. It would only stabilize one pellet at 50 and 100, and that's part of being an air gunner. You've got to figure that out. I've got to figure it out. My job's to figure it out and hopefully point you guys down a, uh, down a healthy path. Before we jump over to some ancillary fun, I do want to talk about this stock design a little bit. So it's kind of a unique deal. Um, whether you have the walnut or the lamb in it, it's kind of like this clamshell deal. This just bolts onto the bottom of the gun. You pop the safety out, you gotta pull it out to get it off. Take out your little grub screw so you don't tear nothing up. Then there's just two little screws on the bottom here. It just slides right off the bottom of the gun. You may have to do some wiggling if it's tight. This screw up here is for your external hammer spring adjuster, which is kind of a nice deal. Just don't forget, loosen that grub screw, you're gonna be tearing up them threads. Okay, but um, this just screws onto the bottom with two screws. And this guy up here, um, this guy up here has two, I should have brought him out here to show you, but let's see if this will stand up here. No, it will not. But you'll see a hole here and you'll see a hole right there. All right. <clears throat> Those holes coincide with that hole and that hole. So these two guys, all right? It's just a pin that you tap in and out of there with like a little, you know, rubber, a little, I use the rubber mallet and a tap to push them in and out. They, they are directional. They go one way. I was on the phone with Utah Air Guns going the wrong way on that when I blew, when I splintered this laminate stock on these two holes. So don't do like I did and mess up your beautiful laminate $1,400 Air Max Cayman X, all right? You don't wanna, you don't want that to be you because that is not gonna be covered under your two-year warranty, all right? That's not their fault, so just something to, uh, just something to be mindful of. If you wanna take the top off, which you don't have to, you can get to your hammer spring, your safety, your trigger adjustments just with those two bolts taking the bottom off. With this walnut one over here, I had a lot more clearance and tolerance in these um in these little push pins so they came out a lot easier and didn't rub against the stock when they came out but anyway i don't want that to happen to you what happened to me that's the green laminate i think there's a dark green laminate as well um, they're both i think like 50 dollars upgrades speaking of upgrades um as i mentioned this is Utah Air Guns is, has, the, has been the enabler for me for this entire project. And they're, they've got, they're developing their own brand of air gun stuff. It's called uh, Air Marksman. I'll show it up. I'll lift this up so you guys can see it. All right. See that Air Marksman? Name and logo right there. Anything and everything having to do with air guns that's, that's going to be a Utah Air Guns creation to sell to you guys directly, to sell to other dealers, to sell to their customers. It's gonna be labeled Air Marksman, as I understand it. 
And one of the things that Utah Air Guns has been working super hard on is their new carbon fiber tank. Um, you know, when a company goes to work developing one of these things, the big hurdle is the United States Department of Transportation. I mean, talking to Utah Air Guns, they're controlling not just like the function and the performance, but very specific materials, bladder, carbon reinforcement webbing, uh, epoxy, like they're controlling that stuff. And like, you can't have a tank that meets DOT requirements unless, um, you know, unless you're doing what they say in those areas. And, um, and so, you know, this one's DOT certified. It's uh, 74 cubic feet. I think they got a bigger one too. That's probably closer to a hundred. I think your $550 price point for this one. I don't know what the other one is. Um, and I don't, I don't know the name of the brand that's actually building the tank, but in talking to uh, Utah air guns, it's, it's the same brand that's supplying like fighter fight or firefighters and, and all of these other guys. So, you know, here in the United States. So that works for me. The, uh, the, uh, the valving is not of the same company. Utah air guns has developed that independently and working closely with a couple of different companies. So it'll ship with its own whip, which has, this is kind of a nice deal. It has the extra long foster fitting on this end. Okay, this one goes to the uh, bottle. It looks like it's about a three foot whip, All right? And these tanks are shipping with dual gauges. Like I know that's important to a lot of you guys. It's important to me, okay? Here's the glycerin filled to tell you what pressure the air is on, in the line and in the gun. And then on the back side, here's one um, that tells you how much air is in the bottle. I got 300 bar in here, which is like 4,400 and... 35, 70, I forget. PSI, it's a lot. Okay, this is the same thing a fire fireman or firewoman would have on their back when they go into a, uh, go into put it, putting out a fire. But a um, little top yoke here and a little pressure release on the side. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm excited to be able to start playing with this. I'll put it in the full review when I go to refill that gun. I'll show you guys how to do it. And apparently uh, Utah Air Guns even has... Um, They've got some totes coming for these, some sexy totes, because we want to keep our we want to keep our our tanks, our tanks nice. Okay, um, I'm also kind of curious. Nah, I was wondering how many how many fills I'm gonna get on a 285 cc 300 bar deal with a with a 300 bar um, <clears throat> carbon fiber tank, but. Don't rely on me for that. There's calculators out there for you guys <laughs> on the various websites. I'm sure Utah Air Guns has one so you can figure out uh, your fill stuff, how many times you can fill a gun. It, you can plug it all in. <clears throat> Last thing I want to share with you guys before we close and we get out of here, it's Friday. I'm excited to start my Easter weekend. I'm sure you guys are too. Is What was kind of funny is when Utah Air Guns said that they had wanted to send this gun to me and I saw that it was the Air Max Cayman, I immediately thought of Hawk. <laughs> so I called Hawk and I'm like, hey guys, can I review your your Hawk Air Max compact on the on the Air Max Cayman compact? And they said yes. So a long story short there, guys, this is the Hawk Air Max SF side focus 30, 3 to 12 by 40 compact scope. I've reviewed this scope a couple of times before. This scope, guys, is bleeping phenomenal in every way that you can think. AO ranging's dead on. It's nice, nice and clear on the glass. The turrets behaved exactly. They did what I told them to do, and that's all I care about as an air gunner. I don't really get into any more depth in there. Super positive clicks. I'm sure you can hear that. These caps are big and heavy. A lot of times these caps, you feel like, you could poke through them with a toothpick on some of these. This is not a nice heavy, de heavy duty deal. Illuminated radical. The side focus is over here, and um, the ocular is adjustable, of course. And you've got magnification from three to ten. I run everything on three to ten. It's a relatively short eye relief. Don't knock pellets over, Steve. It's a relatively short eye relief. I'm right about here for a full picture. 
you guys can see that better than I am, better than I can. So I'm using these sports match mounts. I forget the name of them, the model number, but I'll put them in the screen somewhere so that you guys can see them to kind of offset that a little bit. And I found this to be like the perfect, perfect combo. Should probably show you this once quick without this because not everybody's going to run a bipod. Okay, there's your gun. Tiny guys, seven pounds. Tiny. For those of you guys complaining about light one or, or heavy guns and long guns, as I've said before, your ships come in. I think I think this gun's going to make 90, going to get 99% of people super excited. And with that last tenth tweaking from Airmax, they're, they're going to achieve greatness because all of a sudden you have a $1,350 to $1,400 gun that's playing with Tigers. It's playing with Daystate and FX and Brocock and Caliber Gun and Ed Gun and Air Arms and Rapid Air Weapons. And, and it's doing it in a small, compact package, which reminds me. So... This is a new brand. <laughs> I just can't shut up today. This is a relatively new brand, and and I always like to get the story behind a new brand. <clears throat> and the story goes, um, there was an engineer that worked at AGT, Air Gun Technologies, uh, Vulcan Orgon, in case you're not familiar. And that um, that engineer jumped ship. He left AGT for whatever reason, <clears throat> and. Um, when that engineer was at AGT, he, he, you know, he worked closely with Utah Air Guns because they carry AGT. And when he got over to this company or started this company, I don't know exactly how it all came together. He, um, <clears throat> you know, he called Utah Air Guns and said, hey, I'm over here now and you should check out this new gun that we've, that we've invented. And, and that's how it came to be. So you've got roots probably because I know those companies and you know, they trade players sometimes like baseball cards. You know, I think that there's Caliber Gun, AGT, and now Air Max. It's all kind of uh, mixed as far as some of those employees go because it's all in the same geographic area. Um, I don't know exactly where these guys are, but I'm guessing they're in the vicinity of Prague, <clears throat> Czech Republic. But uh, anyway, that's the roots, and I'm seeing a lot of great greatness as we talked about so this is a brand i'm going to be keeping a very close eye on as the years go by because it's ticking all of the boxes for me as an air of an air gunner you know i get frustrated <clears throat> you know, i'm looking closely at the company um is the power there is the velocity there is the barrel there is, is the cocking lever there is the trigger there is the safety there is the ergonomics there is the weight there is the link there is the regulator there is the refill pressure there is the trigger there you know it just goes on and on and by there i mean what you and i know we want from years of experience having played with these things and i i just have a hunch that this is going to be one of those companies that's going to want to answer the call because they've come out of the gate swinging as a as a, a sweet ass little nine tenths gun so with that um if you are new here thank you for hanging with me so long i'm on instagram hooked on air if you want to know what i'm doing day to day i put pictures up there almost daily of what i'm doing with tech notes to bring you in on that so you don't have to wait for this vlog instagram hooked on air also on Facebook, AEAC, Air Gun Exploration and Advancement Channel, or Hooked on Air on Facebook should bring you to my page. Factory press releases, kind of organized thoughts there, teaser videos, close-up pictures. You'll find all that on Facebook. Then you have AEAC Vlog. Then you have AEAC Home, my main channel. Then I have a website, aeaconline.com, um, which is the bullpen. If you want to know what's in the queue to be reviewed, because um, one of the most common questions I get is, what's next? What? Just go to aecaonline.com. You'll see the bullpen. You can see what's kind of in the 90-day window. You can see what's been promised by manufacturers and companies that they want to send for the year. And um, there's a whole lot of other information there on that website as well. And then I'll have AEAC merchandise coming too that'll be available on that site. We're close to that. 
just waiting on my pat on my patents and trademarks to come through for that stuff and then uh, <clears throat> and then you'll start seeing that populated so with that wherever you are whatever you're doing I hope this video finds you well and weather permitting I will see you probably about two weeks probably about a week filming and then a week in the chair putting it all together take care guys hope you have a great week